This is Matthew of Another World Terraria, where I teach and inspire you on the topics of rare plants and artistic nature displays. In part one of this tutorial series about grow racks, I showed you how to assemble a wire rack for grow bins. In this video, part two, I'll teach you how I install lights on the shelves and set up the electrical components. These are under cabinet lights, which are often used over kitchen counters below the cabinets and these are off of Amazon. I'm not gonna tell you the exact ones I got because there's like a million different ones on Amazon that are all generic and a lot of them are good. So you can just kind of go on there and find ones that look good to you. You can check the lumens or brightness and the color temperature, you know, the Kelvin. So I always go with 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin because it's a natural looking white light, kind of a daylight balanced light. So that looks more natural and more attractive in my opinion. There's all kinds of different features, like this one has a little dimmer so you can adjust the brightness on it. They come with these little connector cables so you can chain these together and then they all can plug in with this one power thing and it has a little on off switch built in which is nice. And then they give you mounting um, supplies like adhesive and clips and whatnot. I'm not gonna use any of this stuff because we're just gonna attach it to the rack in a different way which I'll show you. These under cabinet lights are one of a number of different types of lights that I use for growing plants. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can check out my video which talks about what lights I use for growing plants. Kind of a little bonus topic that I wanna go over as part of this lighting setup video for the rack is talking about the timer and the power strip that I use. This is a digital timer and there's a bunch of different ones you can get on Amazon, different brands. Again, many of them just generic. And I typically go with the one that has uh, seven days of customizable programming so you can have the things go on and off multiple times per day and you can change the schedule any day of the week and so forth. So those are the ones I like and they also have two sockets on them, two plugs. So there's a receptacle here and there's one on the other side and then they have like an on off switch and all kinds of stuff. So these are pretty good and you can usually get them for like 10 bucks. So those are really useful. And then I also use power strips. And one of the great things about power strips is that you can then have a lot more plugs, which is useful when you have uh, these brick type of plugs for accessories where when you plug it in, then it takes up a bunch of space. So since I have two of these, I can plug that one in there and then I can plug this one in right here and then I still have some space there. But I also have some power strips that are bigger than this that are wide and have like two rows or even three rows of uh, electrical sockets. So there's a lot you can do there to customize and expand. I probably will be replacing this power strip with a bigger one, but this is just for setting up initially. And then uh, I do wanna point out that you can then plug this power strip directly into the timer here. And then when the timer goes on and off, it controls all of the lights at the same time. So if you have a big power strip and you have a whole bunch of lights and all kinds of stuff attached to that power strip, and then you just plug that bad boy into the timer, when that timer goes on and off, all of the lights are gonna go on and off. So it's a really good way to have a controlled photo period for your plants. A Couple of things you're gonna to wanna to think about as you plan out your lighting setup for your rack is how many lights you want on each shelf and also how the connectors are gonna run from one to the other and then how many of the lights you can chain together on one power brick. So I have two packs of six lights. I just bought two boxes of them and so each one has its own brick. So I'm just gonna plug those both in and run six on each one as they were intended. Another thing you wanna think about is where you're gonna put the power strip and all of that good stuff. So. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put the power strip on the end of the rack towards the center of the room. And the reason I'm gonna do that is number one, it'll be a little bit easier to get to than if it's over on the side by the wall. And the other reason is if I decide to put another rack right here, so just butt it up against this, then this will be in an easy place to reach for the power plugs for the lights on this next rack if I decide to do that. So just thinking ahead, that'll go there. So there we have it, we've got our timer, our power strip, the cord goes out of the way under this over here and then this is nice and accessible and ready to expand if we want to put another rack here. And of course I would probably get a bigger power strip that has two rows or three rows of receptacles. 
Now that we've got all that important stuff out of the way, let's move on to installing the lights. Here's a little preview of basically what we're gonna set up. This is an existing rack that has three bins going across and each bin has a light directly above it. So we're going to do the same thing on this new rack. I'm gonna take these lights and temporarily lay them on top of the shelf. They will be going underneath and we'll be attaching them, but for now I'm just gonna lay them up here and that's going to allow me to plan out the wiring. And the great thing about this is that this rack has these dividing bars and it splits it into three. And so I can just basically center these in there and then I know that that's where they're gonna be. It's perfect. I always like to prototype everything and lay it out before actually installing and attaching things. That way I can make sure that the length of the cables and everything is gonna work how I want it to. So we have the power adapter, then I ran the power cable up to the back of this first light. Then it comes and has a connector from the front of that light over to the next light. And then I have one coming out the back of that, it goes over here to that light. Then this one goes over and up to the next rack and then to that light. And then that one connects in the back to this. And then this one connects in the front to the last one here. So that's six lights and it zigzags all around. And I made sure over here where I wanted this to go to the next shelf. I held it, I held this light down here in place with one hand and then the other hand I moved this over to there and then up and then over to make sure that it would actually have the length to go where I want it to. Now, one other thing that I highly recommend that you do before you actually install it, once you know everything's good, you're gonna wanna turn the lights on and make sure that they all actually work. So, boom, flip the switch, and we've got all of our lights, and they're good. So, we can now proceed with actually installing the lights permanently onto the racks. I unplugged the power cable from the lights so that we can actually install it. We need to move it underneath this rack and put it right here. I like to use zip ties to attach the lights to the wire rack. You can't use clips or screws or anything on these wire racks, so zip ties are really good, and additionally, the zip ties are super easy and fast to do. I like to use the small zip ties and put two together because they're more flexible and thinner, whereas larger zip ties tend to be thicker and not as flexible, so it's harder to get them flat to the bars. And then that gives me more distance than I would have you know, one of them would be really small, but two of them gives me more room. Then all you do is you position the light where you want it. And I usually go about, you know, a quarter or whatever, or a third of the way down the light. I just stick the zip tie over. And what I like to do is go at an angle across two of these bars at an angle. And so I'm just going to grab this, stick it through here. And I'm going to leave that loose for a minute. And I'm going to do the other one. But this one, I'm going to go at a different angle. I'm going to come, this one that goes like that, I'm going to go at this angle on this one. If you want to make things a little bit easier, you can use painter's tape to hold the lights in place until you get the zip ties attached. Now I'm going to tighten these up. So I'm just gonna try and do it kind of equally. So I'll just pull those tight. And then this is, you can you know move them, but this is centered basically. And then I like to take these wire cutters here and I just go in and I trim off the excess zip tie so it's out of the way, like so. Now we have a nice clean, secure um, attachment. The light is straight on there and it's not gonna move, and that was quick and easy. Now I'm gonna go down and attach all the rest of these just like that. I've attached all six lights with the zip ties in the same way as I demonstrated on the first one. Now we're going to attach the power cable and the connectors and everything to the rack. Okay, I'm gonna take the power and I'm just gonna plug it in here. Now something you can do is you can just slide these lights so that you can get in here easier to plug them in and then you can just slide it back in place like so. Then I'm gonna take a zip tie and attach this to here because I like things to be secure as well as tidy and organized. So I'm just gonna zip tie that cable right to the bar 
And then I'm going to also do a zip tie on the other side so that it can support the weight of this dimmer switch thing. Now I'm gonna take the excess cable down here from the power adapter and I'm going to zip tie it together against the leg so that it is tidy and looks good and won't be something that I could trip on or snag on and yank apart. So I'm just going to zip tie that on. I've got two zip ties together so that I can get around the bar there. Like so, there we go. And then I'm gonna do the same on this lower one. All right, that looks good. And then I can just take my wire cutters and trim off the excess zip tie, being careful not to cut the actual power cables. That's looking good. Let's put a connector through here into that light. Then I'm gonna wrap it around here to this light. Then I'm going to take the excess and I'm going to just kind of bunch it up like this. And then I like to put it kind of back underneath there. And then we can just go right through here and zip tie that in place. Okay, so we have the connector right there and it is out of the way and you can kind of pull it and adjust it so that it's nice and tidy. Cut that bad boy off and we're good to go. So I'm going to continue that and zigzag the power cable uh, from light to light and zip tie everything in place so it's nice and tidy and then I'll check back with you. Let me show you how I run the cable to the next shelf. So first I just stick it right into that light. Then I like to take the cable and go right back through this hole next to it, like so, so it is not in the way. Then I go underneath there, so it just goes right back through under there. Then I run it up to this next shelf above and I wrap it right around under here and through like that. And then just because, again, I like things to be secure, I'm going to go ahead and zip tie that cable on the vertical leg in a couple spots just to make sure everything is nice and tight. All right, we've got six lights attached. They are zip tied on. The cables are tidied and everything is working. Now I just need to do all of those same things for the remaining two shelves. Boom. There it is. Complete rack setup. We've got the rack. We got 12 lights space for 12 bins of the type of bin that I use that can fit three across on each shelf. Got the power strip and the timer. Everything is good to go. Now, if you're new to all of this, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go over and watch my tutorial series on how to make a bioactive grow bin.